office wife. The story of the girl who married her boss and of the girl who took over. Here is Jeff Pilgrim, resuming with another episode of Office Wife. I had conscience trouble last night after taking Stella out, but not this morning. Yesterday afternoon I went to the hospital to make arrangements for bringing Marcia home only to stumble on those plane tickets in her handbag. Do you know what Marcy was going to do? She was making a lot of fuss over nothing so that I'd buzz off to the West alone with Stella and she was going to come sneaking after us, actually going to snoop on us. God, there's one thing I detest. It's being taken for something I'm not. And by my wife, of all people. So, for better or worse, I went on the tiles last night. And Aunt Harriet knows about it. Well, I don't care who knows. Morning, Jeff. Had fun last night? Not much. Huh? That's the Puritan in you. When's Marcia leaving the hospital? Sometime today. Uh, are you calling for her? I'm sending a cab, Harry, and I'm not in the mood to go through my catechism. Mm, that's bad. So it looks like blowing up into a full-scale row, eh? Yeah? It can blow into anything it likes. I'm not going to have my wife running around like a cloak-and-dagger character peering through keyholes to see if I'm kissing my secretary. Now, don't wear the injured innocent's tooth in, old boy. And what's that supposed to mean? Well, didn't you kiss La Bronson last night? Mind your own damn business. <laughs> Very well, then. Can't have it both ways. If ever a man had an excuse to take another female out last night, I did. And personally, I don't look for excuses. If I want to take him out... Out they come. Uh, you're not married. <laughs> Heaven forbid. Look here, why don't you be a good chap? You've squared your account with Marcia. Go to the hospital, bear your soul, take her home and start all over again. I'd hate to see you two on the rocks. You'd, um, you'd have to leave the firm, wouldn't you? Well, so what? I can make another 500 a year with Benny Puller. No, no, that's your pigeon, old boy. You don't mind my butting in. No, 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 that's all right. It's just that as a friend of yours, I'd like to see the route patched up. See you later. So that's how things are, Marcia. When Jeff told me he was sending a cab for you, I decided to come and drive you home myself. Uh, he needn't know. That's very sweet of you, Harry. But uh, what shall we do with the cab? Pay the chap off when he arrives. Uh, he'll be here any minute. Jeff's furious with me. Yes, I know. Did he tell you why? Mm-hmm. No, oh, I made a mess of everything when I crashed my car, didn't I? Stella Bronson's ensconced firmer than ever. Oh, hang it all. Jeff's a friend of mine. I'd better just drive you home and shut up. Are you trying to tell me something? Well, I'd like to tell you about 50 things, Marcia, but I can't. I only want you to know that if the worst comes to the worst between you and Jeff, I... I... Well, you won't see me shedding any t tears. Why, Harry Palmer. I I've tried to hide it, Marcia, but you must have known. When I see a chap like Jeff Pilgrim doing this to a girl like you... I... Doing what to a girl like me? I can't tell you. I, I should have kept quiet. It's not Jeff's fault altogether. That woman's enough to break down the will of a saint. Stella Bronson? <laughs> Who else? Harry Palmer, will you please tell me what's been going on? At once! I don't start beating your chest, there's a good girl. I didn't come here to tell tales. But I insist. Now, what have they been up to? Well, will you keep it to yourself if I do tell you? Uh, keep it from Jeff, I mean. You, you won't tell Jeff that I spilt the beef. Oh, of course I won't. All right. But it's only because I think you're being played some pretty shabby tricks. Lord knows I'm no one's guardian angel. Listen, Marcia. Last night, Jeff met Stella at the Corassier's bar. 
and later on I was down on feet. Why, that'd be lovely, Mr. Puller. Thanks awfully. Yes, I'd love to. I simply adore swimming pools. Yes. <laughs> Why, of course. All right, goodbye now. Are you using your irresistible, whatever it is, on Benny Puller, Miss Bronson? Uh-huh. And it works, too. I'm invited to tennis and swimming at Benny's on Sunday. I like young people around the place in the summer, Miss Bronson. Invite yourself any time. <laughs> uh, this is going to be just ducky. I'll be there with Marcia. Oh. Would she have us to let her up a sleeve or just some cyanide to pop into my gin? She probably won't even acknowledge your presence. Jeff. What about last night? What about it? I enjoyed it. Too much. Again sometime, please. Uh, don't breathe it down my neck. Do you want Fleming to come stampeding in? Come on, kiss. Just a little one. Quickly. Oh, pull yourself together for Pete's sake. Oh, sorry. You really are the most difficult man. Take me out some more, won't you, Jeff? No. Oh. So I'm just a stand-in. I don't see why it shouldn't be possible for us both to forget last night. Well, call me up next time you have a row with your wife. I just love being made a convenience of. Kindly don't shout, Stella. You were not made a convenience of. Because we went to Fig Tree Street once, doesn't mean we have to keep on doing it in perpetuity, does it? What's the matter? Afraid Marcia might find out? Oh, heavens, I'm going home. Isn't there a woman in the world I can raise my hat to without being owned, trained and raised for the rest of my life? If you call putting your head on my shoulder half the night and tell me about your beastly marital strife, you... you... Oh. Why do I let that man infuriate me? Why? Oh, hello, Uncle Tresida. Come on in. How are you, Marcia? Glad to be home again, I'll be bound. You feeling all right? Me? I'm fine. It wasn't that Harry Palmer's car I saw driving away just now. Yes. The dear boy brought me back from the hospital. Palmer? Where the devil was Jeff? I say, Marcia, switch that infernal wireless off. If you can't get something decent, will you? But I like it. You know, switch it off till I'm gone, then. Oh, all right. I said, where was Jeff? And, uh, what's that you're drinking? Jeff was at the office with his precious secretary, and I'm drinking an old-fashioned. You wouldn't expect my husband to leave his secretary just to drive me home from the hospital, would you? No, come and sit down, Marcia. Jeff's not too, uh, pleased with you, I'm told. I'm not too pleased with Jeff. Now, Uncle Tressida, before it's too late, get Stella Bronson out of the way for me. You have to. And that's what I've come round to see Jeff about now. It's time he was home. Why don't you ring Stella Bronson's flat? He's probably there. I can understand you, Marcia, up to a point. But if Jeff starts running about with that woman, it's your fault as much as his. My fault? Well, I like that. You behaved disgracefully over that plane ticket business, and I'm heartily ashamed of you. Now, nothing but a spoiled brat. Don't come running to me if you can't bring Jeff to heel again. I don't care. All I want to see is that Bronson woman bounced out of Jeff's office so hard that... She's not being bounced anywhere. She's been given a month's salary and a quiet talking to her. And she'll probably accept an offer from Betty Puller. You are getting rid of her, at last. Yes, I've finally made up my mind. But, Marcel, don't you breathe the word of this to Jeff. Not even after I told him. I don't want you to think you're, well, that you've scored. In any way, you haven't. This is entirely my decision. Oh, Uncle Tressida, you darling, you darling. Don't darling me. Where's my hat? Ask Jeff to ring me when he gets home, will you? You're cross with me, aren't you, Uncle Tressida? Very. And when this Stella Bronson business has quietened down, I'm having you both on the carpet. Darn fool state of affairs when two grown-ups can't manage their lives better than a barnyard. Now, don't forget. Tell Jeff I want to see him. Tonight. <laughs> Darling Uncle Tressida, be as cross as you like. <laughs> I've got my own way, so what do I care? <laughs> Thank you.
Thanks so much for driving me home from the hospital, Jeff. It was sweet of you. Was the cab such a frightful hardship? Couldn't you tear yourself away from uh, pretty Stella? Oh. I'm getting the full sweetness of your nature because I'm late home, I presume. Well, it would be nice if you told me where you were. I've been at the Ambassadors, stoking up a head of steam. Oh. And what about last night? Where were you when I rang from the hospital? I'll tell you. I was at the Cheesecake Club down on Fig Tree Street. And I was having a wonderful time. All by yourself? No, darling. <laughs> I know I'm only your wife, but could I possibly ask who you were with? Yes, I was with Stella Bronson, my secretary. She was good fun. I haven't a guilty conscience. I'm not going to make any excuses, and I loved every minute of it. Well, wasn't that nice? And if you're taking that deep breath to start a scene, you're wasting your time. It's all right. I won't make a scene. Are you taking her out some more? No, I'm not. Jeff, darling, do you still love me? You know perfectly well I do. You know I'm too damn fond of you. But I can't keep it up in this atmosphere of perpetual jealousy and suspicion. It'd stifle anyone's affection. Do you know something, Jeff? We've been fools, the pair of us. Why don't we stop bickering and be friends? There's nothing I'd like more, darling. But if you don't mind my saying so, you're taking this very calmly. What's up your sleeve? Why, nothing. You didn't know I'd been out with Stella all the time, <laughs> did you? <laughs> Look who's being suspicious now. Oh, Jeff, darling, how could I possibly have known? <laughs> Well, don't expect me to tell you about Harry Palmer, do you, sweetheart? Or about Tressa de Bendigo kicking Bronson out. And this is only the beginning. Because when you get a new secretary, I'm going to choose her. And I'll have Harry Palmer to tell me exactly what goes on. Come to think of it, why shouldn't I see quite a lot of Harry? <laughs> on the side. <laughs> We invite you to listen to further episodes of Office Wife, written by L.J. Hardy, a Donovan Joyce production.